My name is Bob Stewart. I'm excited to have you guys here, Karen and Brandon and Beth and Stacy and Jeff, and Joyce, lots of people joining in the room here. Ooh, it is the top of the hour, but I'll give some folks a minute to get in there. There's my friend, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Uh, Ellie, Scott, Richard, Leo, Jordan. Uh-oh, there's too many names for me to keep up now, folks. So my name is Bob Stewart. I'm always curious, before we get started here, we're going to talk about branding today. And um, wouldn't it be awesome? Wouldn't it be awesome? Like, I don't know how many people uh, you have in your database. I was doing a little bit of research. And for years, the, it was for like a 20-year period from the mid-80s through the, basically the, the housing crisis in 2008, the average time that a homeowner lived in their house before they bought their next house was six years. Then 2008 happened. And, and from 2008 up until the, the stats I found were from 2018. So maybe they've tweaked a little bit, but probably not. If anything, maybe they've gotten a little bit longer uh, with COVID, right? Not as many of us can move, but nine years is the average that somebody spends living in their house. So my brain immediately goes to, okay, if nine years is the average amount of time, that means a ninth, right? On average, a ninth of the people in my database are potentially moving. Now, we, there's a whole bunch of other math you have to do there then, right? Well, how many of the people in my database are homeowners? Well, on average, that'd be about 65%. So I take 60, let's say I had 10,000. Now I'm down to 6,500 people in my database that are a homeowner, and on average, they move every nine years, which means a ninth of them are potentially going to move this year. Again, we're just dealing with averages, right? But, and, and I'm not very good at, I'm not quick at math, but right away I'm like, ooh, that's 650 if it was 10%, right? One in 10 every 10 years. Let's just say it's 10 years at this point. So one in 10 of them are going to move. And I got 6,500 potential homeowners in there. Ooh, I got 650 people in my database that are going to move this year. And then if you did have a 10,000 person database, you're like, well, wait a minute, we don't do 650 transactions just out of our database. Like, and, and what's the disconnect there? Now, I'm not going to act like it's 100% branding and marketing to these people, but it is a big component. So we're going to get in today and, and talk about really a variety of ways that, you know, you can just expose your brand to a wider array of people in your database and then people not in your database, right? People you haven't met yet. Before we jump in and get started, ah, thanks, Kevin. Kevin likes my hat. That's my uh, Mickey Mouse baseball hat there, Kevin. Before we get started, do me a favor, Ellie, Brandon, Beth, Jem, Jordan, Joyce, Karen, any of you guys, tell me, are you guys currently Brevity clients? I'm, I'm always curious, you know, we, we market these. Now, you've been branded. Like, you know our brand in some way, right? Awesome, Brandon. In some way, you know our brand, okay? If you're not a Brevity client, it's because you came across some of our marketing, you downloaded one of our white papers. Maybe you came by and visited us at a booth at, at a, you know, some event that we were at. Or, or maybe you, you, you know Ben Kinney and you were up for one of his classes up here in Bellingham. Okay, so we've got a, a little bit of a mix, it looks like, of um, some, some past clients, some cl current clients, Brandon and Richard, awesome. Uh, Patty, who's not a client, that's fantastic. Heather, I think I even recognize Heather, of course I recognize your name. All right, this just gives me a sense of kind of who's here. Not that it's going to change what we talk about per se, but let's get our, let's get our screen up here. And I'll share my screen with you now. And let's, let's dive in here and, and start talking a little bit about some tactics to get more exposure for your business. And if you guys listen, I don't know, if, if any of you guys listen to our podcast, they always give me a hard time about being the math guy. The reality is I can't even count to eight. I think there's nine or 10 in here. And um, I'll be honest, I'll be super honest. The only reason I write headlines like eight tactics is... Uh, there's a bunch of science behind the fact that when this lands in your inbox, you're more likely to click open something that seems like it's a, a numbered list where you, where you can pick and choose 
from the things in there that might apply to you. So I think we actually have nine. Um, we could have just called this tactics to get more exposure for your real estate business, but literally putting that number on there gets higher open rates from the emails we send. Ah, the stuff you learn over the years, right? So I came across this as I was kind of researching just this, uh, the, the, the concept of marketing. And this was written by a guy named Thomas Smith in 1885, right? Uh, 150 years before, 100, 135 years before, we could run ads on the internet in the fashion that we are being kind of bombarded with advertising today. This was before, you know, there was ever advertising, like, everywhere you looked. I mean, any one of us, in fact, right over my shoulders, this was kind of the, the start of really massive advertising was right around the war and kind of the post-war years here in the United States. Um, where it just all of a sudden advertising in the 50s started showing up everywhere. But this guy already back in 1885 understood that if I was running marketing or advertising to people, right, the first time, and by the way, this is 1885, so everybody's like sexist. And so it's all, it's in the, I was going to make it like the first time uh, someone looks at an ad, but it's, he's written it like it's like there's only men, which is whatever, right? We've come a long way, baby. So the first time a man looks at an advertisement, he just doesn't see it. Second time, he doesn't notice it. Third time, he's kind of conscious it's there. Um, fourth time, faintly remembers having seen it. Fifth time, he actually looks at it, right? The sixth time, she kind of turns her nose up at it. The seventh time, she reads through it and says, oh, what? Eighth time, you know, here's that thing again. You know, ninth time wonders if it if it amounts to anything and on and on, right? Asks his neighbor if he's tried it, wonders how the advertiser makes it pay, you know, thinks it must be a good thing and just continues, continues, continues until eventually he sees this thing for the 20th time and and, and decides he's going to he's going to buy it. Now, this is this is not a science, right? And, and, and the reality is I don't you don't sell stuff. Right. As a real estate agent, you're not like convincing somebody to buy this house. Now, you are convincing them to work with you, right, that you're best suited to help them achieve the dream of home ownership. that you're going to be the person that, that that helps them build wealth through real estate, you know, over the course of, of their their life. This wording that I'm using, by the way, delivering the dream of home ownership, building wealth through real estate. These are Ben Kinney team kind of concepts and fundamentals, right? These are the kind of ads and marketing and branding that we're putting out there constantly. But the point of this is it takes a really, it, it takes a long time to get people to kind of notice you or your business. So let's, let's just, let's easily, let's, let's ease in to some of the things that we can do in this arena. We'll kind of, as we keep going here, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll ratchet it up a little bit. Okay. So and often, if it wasn't going to be 80 degrees out, I would have on that sweatshirt that you see on the right-hand side here, um, which is, is really the mission of, our, of not just the Ben Kinney team, but of our, uh, of our entire world, right? Our software companies, our mortgage pro company, our, our title company, right? Obviously, the real estate team, delivering the dream of home ownership everywhere. But when we hit the streets, like when a Ben Kinney agent shows up at, at your house, they're going to be representing the brand, not just when they show up at your house, though, like literally as we, as we move through our community. Okay, so those, those Ben Kinney logo jackets, they're, they're on 100 people right now out, you know, within, within 25 miles where I'm sitting. Okay, the, the hats, the, I'm not, you know, we, look, we're a, we're a less buttoned down culture here, right? Hoodies and, and uh, REI jackets. If you guys have ever kind of come across Ben Kinney, you know, he's famous for his vests, right? We've got Ben Kinney vests as well, but we've got polo shirts, right? If we have to dress it up a little bit, or I think floating around here, there's even a, a few like total collared button up shirts that, that represent the Ben Kinney logo, but just how does your team kind of represent you out Look, some of you are never going to do this. You go, that's ah, not my style. It's not my thing. But we want to make sure that, you know, as people see us in our community, it, it's a recognizable thing that they're, that they're seeing and, and identifying with. Okay. That, by the way, the delivering the dream of home ownership everywhere sweatshirt gets a lot of, a lot of compliments and a lot of like 
questions like, wait, what do you guys do? Or, um, you know, I think it's one of those things where like the better your branding and the better your, your, your logo and kind of your, that's our mission statement on the front there. Potentially the more, you know, interaction you're going to get from, from just literally having your uniform. Now, one thing I didn't put into a slide here, but we partner with a company called Brandco and Ken Granger is he's, three decades in the in the real estate industry with branding and, and real estate agents and so when i was getting feedback from ken i'm like hey what are some of the things you guys do over there that are they're really successful you know that that agents are often kind of investing marketing dollars into and he had said uh, name tags he's like we do a ton of name tags still and to me that's a little bit like I, our people don't necessarily work but some of them do right some of them like swear by their name tag, right? So they got their Ben Kinney um, hoodie on or whatever, but don't, that name tag is something that it allows people to feel like they have permission to start a conversation with you when you're out in public. So Ashley shared with you the Brandco website there. One of the things that, look, I don't, I don't, it doesn't matter to me where you guys kind of formulate your brand strategy, right? Where you have your logo design, the logo tournament, and there's all these kind of options you could do that at these days. Uh, but one of the things that Brandco does is help you really kind of define that, that strategy across like all the things you do, right? So we never, I mean, here's another one. And, and look, the buyer listing presentations and or, or listing presentation and buyer consultation folders are not the only thing Love it, Richard. He says, I've got my logo on polos and hats and pullovers and stickers. Awesome. Right. So, so you've got the kind of, we're, we're rep our uniforms represented as we're out there, but often we leave things behind. Okay. So you're, you're, you're like, we, we do buyer consultations and listing presentations and we've got these kind of professionally designed, like the actual content, right. The actual listing presentation and the actual buyer consultation package, those are, those are designed with our brand. And, but the folder that we leave them behind in, same thing. And this really applies to anything I'm leaving behind. So I don't have a slide in here for business cards, but geez, those should match. And it's the, it's the continuity through all of these things that really allows, if we think back to the 20 times, it's not like you know they, were, they ran 20 ads to this person and, and, you know, this was a little bit different and there was a different color scheme here and the, the wording they use, like, these are consistent. A, a brand is a consistent message, right? And the marketing of a brand is that consistent message reinforced over time. So we're actually in the middle of a branding overhaul here as Ben Kinney and Chris Suarez, two of the largest Keller Williams teams in the United States have, have merged their businesses. And we started this in January of this year with a big announcement and then COVID hit. And so our, the full rebranding effort was, was sidelined slightly. This place Inc is, is our new brand. And so some of these things like the, the, the gear, right. Is I'm showing you the Ben Kinney versions, the, this particular presentation folder, it was just finished on, I don't know, a month ago or something. Um, I haven't even seen the actual hard copy of these. We're probably still using the Ben Kinney ones when we go out and drop them off with our customers, right? But those things sit on their, their, their counter. You know, the, the, their friend comes over the next day. Their neighbors drop by. You know, a lot of times that thing's going to sit out there for a week or two or three. I mean, if, if you lived with my wife, it would sit out there for like five minutes and then it's put into its drawer where it belongs. But, you know, a lot of people are going to leave these things out, Right. So we want to make sure the things that we leave behind, whether it just be simple as like my business card left behind at a, you know, at a showing or something that, that everything we leave behind that, that we take advantage of the branding opportunity there to just get that extra. You I mean, think about it. If you, if you had gone on 20 listing appointments, you know, let's say last year, right. Some teams are going on 20 listing appointments a week or a month. But, you know, those 20 left behind things got four or five potential eyeballs from, from a neighbor, somebody that dropped by, a friend, a family, right? We, we got to make sure these things that we leave behind that have some longevity, market and, and brand our business and make it look professional. I think one of the things that, like, when, when, when 
teams, agents, even, even brokerages, Compass right now, guys, is doing an amazing job with kind of the marketing and the branding support that they give to their agents to go out and present that kind of professional, uh, that professional look to the consumer. I think one of the things about real estate, because we are essentially independent contractors, you know, 1.8 million independent contractors who all have, you know, inside of a few, you know, besides just in a few areas, we all have a ton of autonomy in, in the stuff we do, the branding we do, the marketing we do. And, and sometimes that kind of small business owner, um, it, it's, it doesn't feel professional. It doesn't feel end to end, right? The brand is kind of loosely cobbled together and the business cards look different than the presentation folder, looks different than the signs. Um, and then when I run advertising, if I even do that, it, the, the look and feel there is a little bit different. So the consumer never really lines all those things up so that they, they have those 20 touch points in their head. You're essentially, if you hit them 10 times, they see that 10 different ways. Hope that makes sense. So, you know, we do a lot of the, the handwritten note cards. It's something where on our teams, our, our agents and, and, and our folks are asked to do three of these a day, just sit down and send something, you know, handwritten and, and kind of heartfelt, right? Like, um, or, or thoughtful or just, you know, out of the norm to three people in our database each day. And again, we do that with, with our note cards, right? Again, when we take that extra little bit of time and our brand gets out in front of somebody's eyeballs and, you know, if you land with the message, that little card goes up there, you know, people, it's just like a birthday card. Like people appreciate being able to, to look back and, 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 re, you know, remember that message you gave them, right? Look, after a day or two or three, they go in the, in the drawer, but we want every time we're hitting these people for the messaging, the, the feel and the marketing to be consistent. All right, let's, let's just ratchet it up big time. Okay. I don't know how many, how many people on the call here, do me a favor, like, interact with me here for a minute. Scott, awesome. Thank you, Richard. You guys are interacting already. A bunch of you guys have been. Do me a favor. How many of you guys have seen The Social Dilemma? It's a documentary on Netflix. And um, it's a little bit scary. If you, Brandon says not yet. It's a little bit scary, right? It's this idea that the premise of it is that these big tech companies, Google, uh, Facebook, right? Really what they are is an unmitigated algorithm to serve up advertising, right? At the very end of the day, when you boil them all the way down, they are designed to get us to consume and, and to click advertising, right? Now, you might say content, right? But the reality is they, they profit when we consume and click advertising. And the, the algorithms are designed to be as efficient as possible, to serve us up as much advertising as possible, to just consume so that those companies can, can print money. I mean, at the very end of the day, that's what they do. Now, we've look, before I ever watched that, I mean, they spin it in this very dark manner, right? Um, Jody, it's super powerful, right? Now, the, they spin it in this dark manner. Now, We've been doing this for a while, right? It, it gets, you know, every month, every year, it gets better and better and maybe a little bit more creepy and, and weird about how you can do this. But for our brand and wanting to get it in front of people, like this is a really, really powerful tool. So what is re remarketing or it's also called retargeting, right? It basically allows us, you, to go out, find people who have either who currently are in our database, right? Or, or who visit our website or some, some kind of um, place we have out there, right? Could be a, an ad that they see on our Facebook and they, and they click on that, right? It's basically, we, we can now follow that person. We can start to track them around the internet and we can serve ads up to them in the places they go, okay? So we can serve them an ad on Fox News, we can serve on MSNBC. Doesn't matter what affiliation they are, right? If they lean left or lean right, we can serve an ad up to them. CNN, the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, um, the, the Bellingham Herald, the Seattle Times, you know, your locals, right? 
We can even follow them around in these little apps that they, that they use on their phone, right? So when they're playing Candy Crush at night, we can – and they got to wait 15 seconds in between games. We can be the ad that pops up there. When they open their Gmail, we can have an ad up at the top of it. Like, we can follow them around the internet on the websites they go to and the apps that they use, displaying reinforcing messaging from you to, to get them to, to come back to your website, to, to request a home value, to over and over and over, right? And, and we can, what it does, there's a lot of, a lot of kind of power in this. So it builds brand awareness, right? For the people we do this with, like they'll say things, the, you know, this is anecdotal evidence, right? But they'll say things like, when I call leads, they say stuff to me, like I see you guys everywhere. Or, oh yeah, I think I, I think I recognize you, right? And the guy that says, oh, I think I recognize your name, he's probably somebody that's seen our ad four, four five, six times, right? The person that says, I see you guys everywhere, he's down, the, the, he's down on our 15th or 18th or 20th time he's seen our ad, right? But for a very small, like daily budget, and I've seen these things, we, you know, we've got people that are spending, and they have massive databases, they're, they're driving tons of traffic to their website, and they're spending, you know, hundreds of dollars a day on these remarketing campaigns. We've got people that are spending 15, 16, $20 a day to, to remarket and brand to their own database right? So that their database is, is constantly being reinforced with that brand awareness of the Ben Kinney team, for example. It's going to also be used to nurture leads, right? So you've got people that are coming back to our website um, and then, the, then they're gone for a while. We can start to, to send messages to them based on the things they were doing on your website, right? So if they were on your website looking at seller types of things and maybe they filled out a seller form or they've been on your seller pages, we can reinforce seller base messages to them to try to drive them back. Same for buyers, right? Keep you top of mind with your sphere and your past clients. Just again, that, you know, they already know you, right? But we don't want them to, we don't want them to forget. We, we want them to, to think, and here's, give you a competitive advantage. Here's what these people think, right? If you don't know what's happening here, you'd think the Ben Kinney team spends millions of dollars on advertising. Like how the heck are they on Fox News, CNN, and MSNBC. Like, what? They're not, right? They're just following me around the internet because I was on their website or I'm in their database. Your conversion rates and your ROI, like they, they are dramatically increased, increased by a confluence of events, right? That, that brand awareness they have, that, oh yeah, I recognize you guys, that, that kind of underlying belief from the consumer that, man, these guys... They, they do a lot of business, clearly. They're advertising on all these really, really big places, right? And then just that, you know, that targeted attempt to drive them back to your website. So here's a couple of stats about remarketing. If you guys are curious about remarketing, okay, maybe you're a Brevity client and you'd like to do it. Maybe you're not a Brevity client. You're like, yeah, this, I can see how this could have some value. I got a pretty big database right now. And even if you don't have a database, um, Here's, here's, and here, here's, so if you don't have a big database, but you have a website, right? There's a high, there's a high likelihood that probably 19 out of 20 people that hit your website never became an actual lead in your life. Never fill out a form, never reached out to you, never hit a contact button. Like they never did anything. They hit your website and they left in many cases, almost immediately, right? They, maybe they saw your thing and they clicked through and they're like, yep, yeah, not for me and gone. What we do is we just start tracking those people, okay? We start retargeting to those people. So even if you don't have a big database, we can build a pretty big remarketing profile for you. And then we can also do stuff like where you can market to people that are similar to the people that you have in your database, right? And, you know, when you watch the social dilemma and you start to realize like what they know about us, how many data points they have on all of us, it's not far-fetched to think like, Wow, I can take my, my database, it's got a thousand people in there, right? And we can actually spin audiences out of that thousand people that give you, you know, tens of thousands of people in your area that meet the same kind of profile of the people that you already have in your database. So if you're interested in the remarketing stuff, like pull your phone out right now and text remarketing to 59559. 
So you just send the word remarketing, the phone number you'd send it to would be 59559. And you'll get this little link back where you can go and, and get on uh, the calendar of our remarketing specialist. His name's Grant Gould. He actually runs kind of our entire Privity Leads and Marketing Department. And he's he's been doing this for longer than there's been at Google. He's a, he's a really bright man. I um, mean, he can answer any questions that you might have about this stuff. So let, let's keep going down this kind of exposure through through paid means right and again affordable but um nonetheless through through paid means facebook property ads so um if you're a keller williams agent they have these out of command right you can run your own ads every time you have a new listing if you're a uh what a compass agent you could do this if today if you're a brevity really soon if you're a brevity client you're gonna be able to run your own facebook ads but here's this is my belief about just about any advertising thing. Cause for years I was neck deep in, in running Google pay-per-click campaigns for our real estate brokerage. And, but it was kind of what I did. It was the, it was the horizon of that, of that time. Right. There, there wasn't a bunch of experts out there cause this stuff was new. And so I was, I was kind of immersing myself in and, and, and really becoming an expert today. Let's say right now today, if you decided I want to start running Facebook ads, do you think, and this is my question, like, do you think you could do it 20% better than somebody that does it every day, all day? I think that's, you don't know what that is. That's like a FISBO deciding they're going to get more money for their house by selling FISBO than going with an agent. And we know the statistics say that's not the case. They get less money than they would have had they paid us a commission right? So we, we charge when we run advertising, right? We have a 20% fee that we take on your spend. So if you want to run $500 in Facebook ads, we'd spend $400 of that. Okay. Now, um, I believe our team is always going to be 20% better than what you can do unless you were hundred percent dedicated to that. And that's all you did. Because even if that was all you did, you're running one campaign for yourself. We're running hundreds of campaigns for different people in different markets with different target audiences, you're always changing the ad, right? Analyzing those things every day. So it is now the Facebook ads, the, the, the per cost on, per lead on, on these ads are, it's almost silly. Like, I haven't seen costs like this since we were doing this back in 2003 on Google at the beginning of Google when there was almost no competition, right? In Seattle, Washington, we were running ads like in, in Google in 2003, four, whenever it started, there was nobody else was doing it. We were getting leads at a buck or two a lead. We were high five. This is amazing. We built a big real estate brokerage out of those leads, right? This is, I'm shocked still that you're, we're able to do this, right? But we are. And, and the way we do it, um, we take these dynamic feeds, right? We take a feed from the MLS, we convert it into an XML feed, and we feed those listings up into Facebook. And we start to build property ads based on your listings or the listings in your office. Um, and then as consumers start to take action on those ads and we pass them through to your website, we track what they're doing on your website and then the, we refine the ads. So the next time they see a property ad from you a day, two, three days later, it, it becomes closer and closer to what they had looked at on the website. And we continue and, you know, it's, and it's automated, right? So when your listing goes pending, we pull that, that ad down and we, we bring up the next listing that's, that's now active. And this thing all works um, in the background and, and our team's managing it and they're tweaking the ads and they're tweaking the audience. But we're targeting the right people at the right time. Really affordable. But what, what it does for you is it, it adds more people to the database that we can then remarket to, right? So we can just keep this cycle going. It also gets exposure for your brand, right? For your business. Like we're getting you out in front of a bunch of people that are in your area, that are interested in real estate, right? And then we're just, we're kind of cycling through them, right? We were remarketing to them. Then we're putting in form of Facebook ads in front of them. Then we're following them around on all the places they go. And eventually they get to that, you know, who knows how many, how many touches it is in real estate. It's, it's hard to say, 
But the story that we saw in the beginning where the first three times they see our marketing, they don't even recognize it, right? And eventually, whenever that is, the 20th time or the 50th time, right? They're going to do business with us because we've just, we've been there the whole time. Our brand has been there. I love postcards. I don't know why. Um, maybe because as a little kid, I always like, was anybody else like this? You wanted to run out and like, hope you were going to get mail. Even though as a little kid, you literally never got mail like once a year on your birthday and get, you know, a card from each of your grandmas. If you were lucky enough to have your grandparents alive when you were little. And it's like, they, they, they came on the same day. You were devastated because you would have rather they came on two different days. Right. I, as an adult, for whatever reason, I still have a little bit of like, I don't know, I don't know um, a little bit of hope when I go to the mailbox. And one of the, one of the, the things I get, I don't think I have a, in a, in a different webinar, I've, I've showed an actual picture of this thing. It's from, he's from a Windermere agent in Seattle. Um, his name is Chris Heller, I think. No, not Chris Heller, Chris something. He hasn't sent me enough postcards. But anyway, um, and it's just all the houses that have sold in my area, right? It's just a list. It's like, look, I have more, I have access to more real estate data than 99.999% of anybody in the country, right? I still like that stupid postcard. Now, we, we have a, a product called Brevity Marketer, okay? So what Brevity Marketer does is it automatically creates from templated designs, just listed and just sold postcards. Every time the MLS feeds us that you have a, a new listing that just went active, or a property that just moved to a sold status. We send these postcards out to an AI cultivated list of addresses around that home so that the postcard is most likely to end up in the, in the mailbox of somebody that's, that's more likely to be in a position of, of selling, right? And so, or, so for example, uh, you, you've got a listing. We wouldn't send your just listed postcard to somebody right next door or three houses down that just moved into the house a month ago. We know statistically they're not gonna, they're not gonna do anything for nine years, right? We're gonna send it to the person down the street that, that bought their house seven years ago, right? And we're not gonna send your four bedroom, two, three, two and a half bath to somebody who lives in a one bedroom, one bath, right? So there's this whole algorithm that we've designed to decide like who's the best person to get this postcard, not just the nearest 300 houses, right? You, you pick how many you want to send out. It's 59 cents a postcard for the, the print, the, the postage into their, into their mailbox. You can send these to a specific area. So you'd go draw on a map. So let's say I had a, I always think of Simiamu. I grew up in a little town called Blaine, Washington. And there's a kind of a, a nice area of Blaine. It's called Simiamu. And it's out on the spit and beautiful homes and golf course, overlook the water. We live up here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest. Then Blaine's kind of the inland, you know, it's, it's just town, right? And then a bunch of little hills and, and some fields and stuff. Well, you, the aspiration would be you live in Blaine and you move to Simiamu, right? You, you work hard, you save money, you, you, your, your, your house that you bought originally appreciates in town and you end up being able to afford to move out to Simiamu. And so if I had a house for sale in Simiamu, I might not leave it up to the AI to try to find other people kind of, I might actually just go draw on a map, Blaine, Ferndale, Linden, right? Those, and those are the people that move. And then I can also do things like I can say target the people that live in this area that I drew on the map in Blaine that bought their house uh, five to 10 years ago. And when they bought their house five to 10 years ago, they paid between 200 and 300,000 because they're going to be in a position now to be able to sell that house and afford to move into a house in, in Simiamu. Or we could just upload a list, right? We can do our own designs or you can use our templated designs. So that's kind of one of our more templated ones. Uh, the templated ones have calls to action that we build in there for you. So they can be text calls to action or they can be these unique URLs that we create for every single postcard we send out so that the person getting the postcard, let me see if I've got an example. Yeah, see that little URL down there, briv.it slash 3uj5. If somebody went and typed that into their browser, we would give you a lead in your CRM that shows you the address of the person who got that postcard and typed it in. We've got a little tool in there you can click to find out more information about that owner and potentially get their name and their email address and their phone number. 
yeah, Richard, you can tweak the templates. The, the, there's not a ton of like design variation. You can tweak every element of the words or the, there's a couple different designs. So you can tweak a couple different designs and then you can tweak every, like, you don't want yours to say just listed. You want yours to say booyah. You can have it say booyah, right? Any, any of the wording, any of the photos, any of that stuff. Or you could literally do your own design. And we've got a tool I'm not even gonna talk about today called Brevity Designer, where you could build the postcard design in Brevity Designer and then, and then bring it in and just upload it in here and do your own postcards. You're welcome, Richard. So we got just listed and just sold, right? Four offers, sold for 15,000 above asking. Awesome, you can do your own designs on your just solds as well, okay? And then the other thing we have are, let's just like literally custom across the board. And when you think about, look, I can upload my own list, right? So I could, I could use this to send postcards to my past clients for my client appreciation party that's coming up at the end of the year, right? Just design the Brevity Designer invite card, upload it into to Brevity Marketer, add the list of my past clients with, you know, that I can export right out of Brevity, upload into to Brevity Marketer, boom. I've got, I've got that, right? We use this for tar for farming. So we run, we do things like this, right? This is the, this is from place. This is kind of our new branding, right? We've been, but yeah, these things are easier for Josiah's team to design than for us to get sweatshirts printed wherever the heck we get sweatshirts printed, right? Branco actually is who, who does those for us. So um, direct fit, direct farming. I had, I had the absolute pleasure Gosh, this would have been 2013 or 14. It was a few years now, right? Of interviewing on a panel, a guy named Mark Spain. And Mark Spain at that time was the number one Keller Williams agent in the United States. And which is so crazy. He, I think he had done nine, between 900 and 1,000 transactions that particular year. And that made the number one agent. Ben's team was number one last year. They did 3,000 transactions, right? So, but Mark built his entire business on direct mail marketing, farming, essentially, right? Farm, mail farming. And one of the things he said to me is, it takes a lot of time. You have to be consistent with this. That, which is why this makes me nervous to, but like, and this is from back in July. When she wrote this, she had only uh, sent three campaigns three mail campaigns couple hundred postcards per campaign she, she'd taken two listings at that point that's why i wanted us to know and i share mark spain's story that you have to be patient and consistent with a direct mail marketing approach right the the windermere guy i, I can remember his first name his first name's chris his last name starts with an h chris heller is an old keller williams ceo or something so that's my brain's clouded by that when four or five more of those postcards land in my, in my mailbox, I'm going to know his name. Now, I'm not going to do business with him because I, I have a, an allegiance to Ben, but some of my neighbors are, right? Some of my neighbors are going to appreciate having gotten that, that, that data from him. This was just posted yesterday. This is actually a Ben Kinney team. In full disclosure, Sarissa Lair runs our Ben Kinney team in Dallas, Texas, and Dana – is a, an agent on that team. It's taken two listings in the last week from her marketer postcard campaigns. And all she's using is the templated stuff with RAI for RAI to send those, those just solds. These are, and these are from just solds, right? So she sold the house in the neighborhood. She puts it out there. Their market's kind of crazy, just like most of our markets, right? Or many of our markets. You know, she had five offers on the house right? It ended up selling for $40,000 over the list price. So that's what she touted in the just sold postcard that went out, right? That's where those new listings came from. That the kind of success stories that she was touting in her just sold postcards. Now she sent, I think they sent 300, right? Which means one, let's say one, she had multiple just sold campaigns she'd run. Let's say one of 300 became a listing, which by the way, it, it might be, you might not get one every time you do it. In fact, you're probably not going to, right? 
But she got brand exposure, which is what we're talking about here today. Right? She got brand exposure to those other 299 people. And they're going to be the same. She's going to continue to get brand exposure to those people because she, she does this. Every time she lists a house or sells a house, she even does this when she's not the listing agent. She sells the house as a buyer's agent. In Brevity Marketer, she can go in, pull up that property, automatically pull in all the info and the photos on it. And she, she can send out a just sold when she represented the buyer. And we do that, right? All right, so if you're a quickly client or you're a Brivity client, you have Quickly, which is our text to lead service, which means you don't use flyers anymore. You, you use Quickly. This is the design of sign you want, by the way. It's not a traditional writer. So some of you guys earlier that said you are Brivity clients, if you have Quickly, which you do, but you have it deployed, this is the style of sign that you need. It's an 18 by 24. It stakes in the ground next to your main listing sign. It's not a rider that hangs below or above your main listing sign. This style will double the volume of leads that you get. And then what does that mean? Well, if you use a traditional rider on average, you'll get one quickly text inquiry per month per sign you have out. I have 10 listings right now. I've got 10 signs out. I get 10 leads. I have 10 listings. I use this style of sign. I'll get 20 leads or closer to 20. That's on average, right? I might have some properties that get four, five, six, eight inquiries in a month. They're on a great location. They're a cool looking house. People are driving by often. There's a stoplight there. So they're often at the stop sign, just staring at my quickly sign. Right? All of other houses in a cul-de-sac that the only people that ever drive by that house are the other three neighbors that live in the cul-de-sac and they already know what it's listed for. I love it. Richard says, I got a call today from a postcard mailed last year. Richard, think about, look, it probably didn't sit on their fridge, but what if it did? What if your postcard sat on their fridge with a magnet on it, like, I hope the branding was good on that. Imagine how many eyeballs walked by that thing while it sat on their fridge for the last year. Yeah, Richard, don't use the traditional riders. Use these larger 18 by 24s. You might need to pick up a few riders because you've got an HOA or something where you're not allowed to have a second sign, but absolutely use this bigger style. I can't, I, uh, it's, it's double the volume of leads. I can't, there, and there's a bunch of science behind why that is the case. And if I, if you were in front of me here, I'd hold two things up, one bigger, one smaller. Your eyes would go to the bigger thing, which is your sign, which is where we want them to go. But your eyes would immediately go to the second thing, which is what happens as they drive by. And when that smaller second thing is, is crunched into the, all the rest of the sign, they don't even see it. When it's separated, their brain takes in the for sale sign with your phone number in a perfect world, they'd call you. But the last impression left on their brain is that smaller thing as they're driving by. I had somebody the other day say, yeah, I know we've been meaning to get quickly out, but our property sells so fast. They're selling in like a day or three. It hasn't even been a priority for us. This is what I said. I'm like, hey, let me ask you a question. That's awesome. Um, do you leave your sign in the yard while it's pending? They were like, yeah. And I'm like, how long is that? And like, as they're saying the words, ah, 30 to 60 days, I can see the light bulb going off in their head, right? I'm like, yeah, this is on Zoom. Just like you can see me, I can see them. And I can watch them saying 30 to 60 days and going, oh my God. Your sign sits out there, not just for the three days it's on the market, like in our crazy markets, right? It sits out there for 30, 45 days, 60 days. The whole time it's pending, right? We've got a chance to pick leads up to get brand exposure all right, these last two, you guys, are just, if you have brevity or if you don't, and you, you have to have these tools. If you don't have, look, if you don't have listing alerts, we, I built our, we built our first listing alert system in 2002. So for 18 years, personally, I've had listing alerts, right? These have been in the industry for at least 18 years. Maybe a little bit after that, I mean, we were building them for ourselves, not necessarily in a platform like Brivity where you could get them. But Boomtown's been around for 12 years. They've had listening alerts all that time, 13 years. Right, so, but market reports, let's start here. Because we talked through, I talked about, I walk out to my, my mailbox and I get that, that postcard from Chris at Windermere. And 
It's got a list of all the properties that sold. If his postcard was like change your clocks, um, you know, fall cleaning tips, here's how to organize your garage. I don't need that crap. I got a cell phone, right? The reality is I don't really need the market report data. I got a cell phone for that too, but it's showing up in my face. I'm like, I mean, I, I, it's, it's often, it's almost every time I'll bring it in and be like, honey, look, look at this one, right? This, this is the same square footage as ours and they got, they got a lot, right? We have this crazy market in Seattle. Um, that's what this is, it's just in digital form, right? A market report is, we can send it to anybody in our database, okay? And we can show them what's actively, what's, what's currently active around their house, what's currently pending around their house, and what's currently sold around their house and how much it's sold for. And then if they're like, hey, look, those people down the street, we thought they were nuts. They listed at 700,000. They actually got 720. I wonder what the inside of the house looks like. Is it like ours, right? Do they have a brand new kitchen like we have? And they open it up and they go, oh my goodness, no. They actually have a kitchen from the 80s. They haven't remodeled their kitchen once and they got 720? What do you think we can get, honey? You want to be, you want to be that, look, this is good. This is good marketing. This is good branding, right? Getting your brand, getting something in front of people that they open it up and your face is on it. Your company logos on it, right? It's, it's information they want to consume. It's about, you know, that area around their house, right? Which has the most impact on what their house is worth. For the vast majority of the people receiving this thing, that home they live in is their most valuable asset. It's going to be how they retire. It's going to be what they pass on to their children, right? These are all the values of home ownership. It's why we, that's why we deliver the dream of that on the Ben Kinney teams, right? And, and at Brivity, where we help you deliver the dream of that. Marco Report, like my, my mom is a real estate agent, you guys. And if you've ever joined these with me before, you probably heard me talk about her. Um, she loves market reports. In fact, <laughs> When we first started these, you know, probably six months in, six to nine months in, she'd start going into our Brivity Mastermind group on Facebook and posting like market report for the win. Like here's another market report email where these come list me emails where the people are responding and saying, Gail, thank you so much for sending this information every month or every two weeks about our house. Um, I think we're ready to talk about what we, what our house might be worth or, you know, we're finally in a position that, that I think we're going to make that big move to Mesa, right? We're going to retire. Like we get more come list me responses from these than we, we've ever seen from anything that personally I've been doing in 19 years of, of, of marketing to, to consumers. It's, it blows me away. The, the open rates on these things, the response, um, but at the very end of the day, it's just another really awesome touch. And it's really a touch for everybody in your database, right? Like if they're a buyer, get them on a market report showing them the area they want to live in, right? Now you're going to be sending buyers listing alerts, right? Again, it's another way to get your brand out in front of people, okay? So you got to make sure that your, your, the photo that you have represents you, your logo, it all ties together. The remarketing stuff they're seeing ties back to those emails they're getting, right? Um, when you send them emails, your email signature looks like your brand. You know, when you ultimately get the, the listing appointment, you show up at their house with the presentation folder that you're going to leave behind, you know, the, you know, a month later that you sold the house down the street from them. And so now they get your just sold postcard or your just listed postcard, like, all these things, you guys, when we put them all in a big pile in the middle, we start to see how our story from our friend back from 1895, we can build on this thing. And it's the very end of the day when it's the 25th time. And look, again, we're not selling them a house, okay? We're selling them the, on the idea that when they're ready to be homeowners or they're ready to sell the house they live in and move on to the next house, that we're the one to help them do it. And oftentimes in real estate, it's simply a matter of being there, being the, being the agent that's there, right? I mean, the majority of the business in, in real estate comes from referrals and past clients. Like every year, year over year, it's 63 to 
that's because you were there before and now you're there. And often you did a good job of kind of being there until they were ready again, right? We got to be there with everybody in the database, not just our past clients in our sphere. All the, the leads that you've poured tons of money in to, in effort to get into the database, we got to have these tools that we can use to market to these people, expose them to our brand over a long period of time. All right. Jody and Brevity Marketer, if you're, I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure, Jody, which you say, where can we see if the content is viewed um, in from listing alerts to market reports? What you do is you would go to the, the lead index and then you would find the uh, last, last visit column or the last viewed column. And if you click the last visit column, it would show you who's been looking at your listing alerts. If you click the last viewed column, it would show you who's been looking at your market reports uh, for Brevity Marketer. We can't see, we, we don't know who looked at their postcard, right? We assume everybody did because they go and get their mail, but we can see who took action on the postcard, who, who clicked or uh, typed in the link or, or texted the keyword that we might've helped you place on that postcard. Um, in, the re, in the remarketing and, and, and Facebook stuff, we give you kind of monthly reports that shows you the, um, you know, all that stuff. And then as we drive people back inside of the timelines, there's timeline events that show you like that they've, they've returned to your website as a result of a remarketing campaign. So it's a little bit here, a little bit there, but hopefully that helps. Um, you're welcome, Jody. So what, all right, I'm at the end. All right. So if you're not a Brevity client, we, we have, um, pricing at all different levels and we've got just kind of like different levels for you to grow into becoming a kind of the, the full mega brevity client, right? And, a, and, a, and really, once you get to the accelerate level, at accelerate, you've got all the stuff we offer, right? The, the, the website, the CRM, the, the uh, valuation websites, which are seller lead gen tools, the CMA, which is our market report CMA tool, uh, quickly, right? Which is our text to lead service. And then going up from there, it's just how many people are you, do you have in there, right? Five, 10, and ultimately you have a big, huge team a couple of years from now because you started at Light or Growth or Accelerate and you grew with us. If you're not a Brivity, look, you, you might have texted in earlier about, uh, you texted Facebook to 59559 to, to check out our Facebook advertising program. Um, you might have texted remarketing to 59559 to, to, to get um, you know, your questions answered about our remarketing. If you're not a Brevity client and some of the stuff I talked about today, you're like, that sounds interesting. I kind of want to, I want to, I want to demo. I want to see what Brevity is all about. I want to see the websites. I want to see how easy it is to move around in the CRM. I want to talk to somebody. I don't want this weirdo that's been in my hats a little bit too small. I think that's why I've been just all the time over my hat. It's a brand new hat. I'm trying to get it worked in here, Kevin. Um, but if, I, if you're tired of listening to this weirdo one-way talk to you and you want to talk to somebody, text PLATFORM to 59559. And we'll have Tim or Ashley, who's on the call with, with me today. Somebody will reach out to you guys. Like they'll, they'll text or call you here as soon as possible. Um, all right. We have nine minutes left. So you have two, you have two options at this point. You can ask a question. <laughs> Thank you, Jody. Uh, I'm even wearing my, I'm in the office here. So if somebody comes in, I gotta, I gotta stick them up, stick them up. Um, right. <laughs> if, yeah, text platform. So you have two, two options right now. You can leave, go claim nine minutes of your day back. High five if you do that. Uh, can you see me when I pull this up? It's camo, so... Or you can hang out here. We can joke around. You can ask a question. Calvin. <laughs> um, yeah, right? Where did I go? Here I am. Here I am. Don't worry. I'm back. Um, I wore this today because I'm going to be recording the podcast later with Ben Kinney. And if you put camo on, he treats you like 1% better. Um, I mean, Ben's a great guy anyway, but and we joke, right? He's a, he's a big camo guy. All right, listen, um, you guys are cracking me up. All right, you guys, go have an awesome day. My name is Bob Stewart. On behalf of Ashley, who helps me, and Kevin, who jumped in here to, to play around with us today, who are Brevity's top clients? That's a great question. I'll stay for that question. Um, I mean, 
So here's some, uh, the Kristen Cole network that, you know, Kristen is a, a mega Keller Williams agent out of Wasilla, Alaska, kind of a, a suburb of Anchorage. We've got um, well, one of my favorite uh, teams is the Anderson Hicks group out of Idaho Falls, Idaho. That They'll do four to 500 transactions this year, maybe even more than that. They're actually on a pretty explosive gro- growth path, but um mike hicks is one of my favorite people he's got a thing that's called the promise um if you've never heard the promise script it's a script they deliver to their clients for every deal they do they get like 0.85 referrals so almost every single deal in their business leads to another referral um and it's all because of the script they use called the promise so they're a, they're an amazing big huge team i mean look the biggest the, the biggest, uh, Jody, the biggest client, I guess you can call it a client, but our Ben Kinney teams, I mean, they all use Brivity. So they're probably our biggest client. Now, you know, Ben owns Brivity and he owns the Ben Kinney team. So, but we've got, uh, I said the number the other day and somebody corrected me, uh, 38 expansion teams now, you know, the number three or four Keller Williams, I'm not sure what number, Chris Suarez, him and Ben just partnered up at Experience. We're moving right now all of their experience teams on to Brivity. So they were the, the fourth or fifth, I don't know what, you know, largest Keller Williams team in 2019. Um, Patty said, how do I find Ben Kinney teams in my area? Patty, you can go to uh, benkinney.com and I believe we have a locations map up there that shows where all of our, the other thing you do, you could email me at Bob at Ben Kinney if you wanted to, Patty, and I could let me know where you're at, and I could tell you who our closest team is. Um, yeah, Tom, it's recorded, my friend. So if you were on the list that got you here, we'll we'll send that out to everybody. Oh, Matt Fedick, Kevin, that's another great one. Matt Fedick has an amazing business up in the Northeast of the United States. Um, big business on on Brivity. Or we've got we have the hundreds of teams that are, that will close over a hundred transactions this year that are using privity. Uh, there's a lot. So some of these names that I rattled off are people that are doing 800 to 500. Um, the Suarez team and do 1400. Like these are really high volume producing teams that are well, really, they're managing their business on the back of privity. We have hundreds of teams that, you know, they did, 20 individual agents did 25 and they did 50. And then next year they want to do 50% more. They, they want to do two times the volume. And so that's why I always say that Brivity is for really for growth minded teams and individuals, right? People that are looking to, to, to grow their business because they want to get systems and models in place. They want to have processes in their business that allow them to scale, but keep the same, you know, keep the same, a commitment to their clients, right? Like that's at its core. That's what Brivity helps you do is build systems and models to scale. Now, um, Paul, so Brivity is a software company. Uh, Brandco is our partner and Brandco does all things branding. So they'll, they'll actually help you build a whole branding kind of strategy, but they do one-off stuff like business cards and signs and sweatshirts. And um, we've got all these big they've got all these big printing presses down there. So they're our partner, uh, Ben and, and Ken Granger, the owner at Branco have partnered. Um, Ken's been, branco has been around for 25 years in real estate doing all, you know, I mean, back then letterhead, they still do letterhead. Right. But you know, that now they do email signatures and they can even help with website design and um, all sorts of stuff like that. All right, you guys. Hey, Jody, you're, you're awesome. You're amazing. Thanks. Ian. Always good to see you, my friend. Paul, take it easy. You guys have an awesome uh, week in, in real – what time? It's Wednesday. It's, it's middle of the week. I hope this weekend everybody listening right now who was kind enough to hang out here till the very end goes out and lands a million-dollar listing and that thing sells before the weekend's over. You guys have an awesome one. Ashley, thank you on behalf of Mikey and Samantha who get everybody here. Appreciate them. My name's Bob Stewart. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.